today's video, I'm going to share with you six natural fever remedies. Now, it is totally normal for any parent to be worried when their little one's got a fever, especially if it's their first fever. Um, but the truth of the matter is that most fevers are completely harmless and it's just the body's natural way um, of fighting against an infection or a mild illness or whatever. So the last thing that you really want to do is to reduce the fever and get rid of it because you would be kind of be suppressing the body's natural ability to um, get rid of whatever virus that um, the body's been exposed to. But what you can do is come alongside um, the body and help it um, to be in the best place possible to be able to effectively fight off um, the virus and then be um, restored to its happy and healthy self once again. So remedy number one is to push fluids. So offer extra water or herbal teas. You can um, try to get in some additional nursing sessions. You can try to give them bone broth if they're big enough to handle that in a cup. Um, and then popsicles are gonna be a really, really effective way and a really fun way to get in extra fluids without you know kind of trying to give them cup after cup after cup. Give them the popsicle, it kind of changes things up a little bit. So make the popsicles, you know, of course, out of water, herbal teas, juices, or even um, breast milk that you have pumped, because the breast milk is gonna be filled with lots of good antibodies and um, lots of things to help your uh, child's body to effectively fight off the um, illness or the virus that it's been exposed to. So number two is probiotics. And this is really, really crucial to help to make sure that healthy levels of gut, good gut bacteria are maintained. So this can either be accomplished through taking um, a probiotic supplement, you know, something you can find at your local health food store, or also then just through foods that are very um, rich in probiotics. So things like um, kefir, kombucha, yogurt, um, fermented vegetables, um, like sauerkraut or something, if you can get your little ones to um, eat any of those, that will be really, really helpful in helping to get in those extra probiotics. Number three is warm baths. And if you can even add um, Epsom salts into that bath water, um, that's gonna be really, really helpful in um, helping your child's body to naturally detox and get rid of the bad gunky stuff um, from the virus that they're trying to fight off, um, well, as well as then also replacing um, some good minerals and nutrients as well. Number four is peppermint essential oil rubbed on the bottom of the feet. But if you do decide to use this, please, oh please, oh please, make sure that you dilute it um, with some sort of carrier oil, like olive oil or almond oil or coconut oil or something like that. Because peppermint essential oil by itself is extremely strong, extremely hot. It's what's considered a hot oil. So um, it can burn really, really easily. Um, if not used properly. So it's effective when used um, correctly, but if not, it can end up causing a lot more damage than, it, than, than help. Number five is to place a cool cloth on the back of the neck. And since that's where most of the body heat is concentrated, that will help um, to effectively, you know, slowly bring down the core body temperature. So an added benefit that you can do instead of just using plain water is to use a solution of um, a two to one ratio of water and apple cider vinegar um, solution in the on the washcloth. And that will just be an added benefit to help to detox um, and pull all the yuckies out. And finally, number six is rest. So whatever you can do to try to keep your child's activity to a minimum. So watching movies, listening to audios, reading books, having extra snuggle time, you know, trying to get them to nap a little extra if you can try to do that. Um, and that's just gonna be really, really helpful in aiding your child's body um, in being able to send all of its energy to properly fight off whatever um, infection or illness or virus or cold or whatever um, that it's been exposed to. Okay, so one more thing that I want to share before I end this video. I just want to remind y'all that I am not a doctor. I'm not a licensed healthcare professional. So please just make sure that you take the suggestions that I've shared here today as such. And like I mentioned earlier, 
Most fevers are completely harmless and um, are really nothing to worry about. But where you should start getting concerned is if your child spikes a fever um, higher than 103.5 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, um, then you start needing to be concerned regardless of how they're acting. Um, but anything lower than that, um, your child's behavior is really what you're going to want to use as a gauge. Um, so if they're still eating and drinking and playing and being their normal self, then you've got nothing to worry about. But if they start to be lethargic or stop eating, stop drinking, um, things like that, then, and, and then also if they spike the fever, um, really, really high, then that's definitely something that you should, um, pay more attention to, make an appointment with a doctor, take them into urgent care because high fevers can definitely be an indication that there could be something a lot more serious going on that could need medical attention a lot sooner. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you found this video helpful and were able to find some little nugget that you can use the next time your little one has a fever. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, share with any of your family and friends who might find it insightful as well. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already, and I will see you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.